Thanksgiving. And they're warning everybody to stay away from each other. But um, this morning in BC, they can't meet in churches. And my best friend in Manitoba, he gets to meet with five people and the pastor, that's all, in church. And so we're blessed. We're multitude here. <laughs> really, it's all the way we look at it. And, and so we are blessed. So blessed. And, um, you know, as we look at things, I, I was thinking as we were praying for the Germans. Can you imagine having um, 10 kids going through this? And the fear? And so we're going to pray this morning for the Germans as well because uh, they'll be meeting. Some are coming, some aren't coming. They're, they're pretty nervous. I mean, when you've got 10 children, you've got a family of 12 that you're responsible for when the fear and everything that's going on. So they're praying for us, but let's pray for them. Father, this morning we just lift up our German congregation to say, come. And Lord, they've come to Canada to, and to, to have a better life. And, um, and they're there in the midst of all of this. But it's not only here, it's around the world. And so we pray, God, that you grant them wisdom. Grant them peace, and for those who are troubled and anxious and concerned, bearing the responsibility of a, of a large family, we pray, Lord, that you just give them peace. And we just thank you that as they pray for us, we pray for them, and when they gather today, our prayers go up to them as well. Thank you, God, that you've called us to, to pray, to seek you, and to uh, trust in you, and you will bring us through. So we give you praise for this now in Jesus' name. Talk to Al before he died, and... Um, and one of the concerns, Al, no, my, many months ago, he, he called, he said, I need to talk to you. And he said, you know, he'd been a leader in the church for so many years, he said, you know, I'm just a worn out old horse. I've got nothing left to give. I'm done. And, um, and he said that, um, I, you know, I love the church, I'm there. And, you know, an interesting thing about Al is that when he, when he came to church, you know, he hardly heard a thing or understood anything. He just couldn't hear. Uh, and, um, but you know, he always came. And I can't tell you how many times in the last 30 years I get a call Sunday night and say, wasn't that a good service? Wasn't that wonderful? Aren't the people neat? And he just kept sharing that. I thought, wow, we can all learn from that. You know, the two... Uh, to uh, realize what God is doing. So, are you guys going to go down? I think uh, Yvonne disappeared, so I think she probably went down. And um, and so, anyways, what I was trying to say about Al is that because one of the things I know that I was concerned about the church, and so I said, um, the last time I think I saw him, second or last, last time I saw him, I said, you know, Al, um, I think I have an idea. I said, um, we're going to ask, because um, his concern, okay. Um, we're going to ask Martin if he would step into your role. And so we've asked Martin to step in to be a board member in the church and to, to, to step into that role. We will have an annual meeting in January. And things will be discussed. I mean, we really have lots of things we need to look at and do. But, but Martin has agreed and, and Vanessa, and they really are the leaders here. And so we're very thankful to have them to step in. And um, boy, he just, they just, they just I, don't, I, I could just stay at home. <laughs> Everything's good. I'll get you to start the camera, Martin, if you could. And uh, so I'd encourage you. What's, oh, wait, it's going. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. you guys, this, I'm telling you, this is great. <laughs> I used to worry about everything. I don't have to worry anymore. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start. If I keep worrying, I'll start getting gray hair or something. <laughs> but the Bible says white hair is a crown of glory or something. So I'm going to get I'm going to we're not getting many. Uh, so I want to tell you, and we're going to talk, I'm not going to go along today, and, uh, but I want to tell you something, how when we face crises and situations, God loves fish. Do you know he loves fish? He had one fish swam along and, went, and took Jonah and went, Ooh. and then he, I don't know how hard the fish had to go and how far he had to go, but he brought him to shore and the third day he goes, Bloop, up he came. <laughs> uh, you can say which one. But God loves fish. He uh, took the fish and multiplied it and fed the people. And, uh, you know, when you think, what am I going to do? Where am I going to turn? Uh, well, it's an interesting thing that, uh, that they needed to pay their taxes. And God said, uh, well, we see when, they, when Jesus called out to them and, and they, they said, you know, cast the net on the other side. And, and they went out and they were fishing. We fished all night. And, and they got so many fish, they couldn't, they couldn't take it all. They'd bring another boat out. It, well, it was sinking. They had so many fish. But another time... God said, uh, well, we've got to pay our taxes. He said, well, cast your line in 
and the fish he caught had money in his mouth. <laughs> Can you believe that? Money to pay the taxes and the fish. Can you imagine how many fish are out there? You want to get the right kind, the right one. But that's how God works. And so we need to be encouraged in a very uh, troubled time. And so uh, we're facing things that uh, we need to deal with. And, and uh, as, as we're going through this time, uh, I was on the phone with the Premier and uh, Dr. Henshaw and uh, two other uh, government officials. Uh, this week there was 500 of us on the phone with them, talking about what we, we're doing and where we're going. And, and uh, there's some, we're really split down the middle in our province. Uh, because on one side they're saying, shut it down, shut it down. Um, and others were saying, don't shut it down before Christmas, shut it down after Christmas, and go, oh my goodness, well, I, I wouldn't want to be that high up. I mean, I have enough trouble with the steel and family. Uh, we might have to walk our door again, and then you could walk, talk through the little, the little window. We're not sure, but there's, there's a lot of fear. But we're not in a day that we need to be caught up in fear. And so uh, some of them were saying that we need to, uh, we need to be able to hire the, uh, the uh, peace officers to go around and enforce the laws. And we go like uh, right along with the people at some of these stores, these uh, security of the stores and, and uh, you know, like, like we just go, but it's not because they're bad or they want to wreck our lives or take over, it's because people have fear. When we have fear, we do silly things. And uh, God wants us to learn how to, how to follow his word and, and the things that he's sharing. So, so we're just getting lots of the word. And I, I think it's good because you don't need to hear me. Um, I got all kinds of ideas, but God's word is what really, really helps us. Father, bless your word now to our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Practical lessons to live by as we are found in James. Last week we read James 1.19. I'm going to read just a few verses there, 25. And he said... Uh, Brothers and sisters, take note to this. I guess he wanted us to take note to it, eh? Everyone should be quite quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that's so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you which, you can, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the words and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So why? Paul's writing in, 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 through the New Testament many, many different books and to different groups of people. So he, he, he's, he's writing to Titus in, in Titus chapter 1. You can look that up because I'm going to go through uh, a few verses there. Titus chapter 1. And it fits together. They all coincide with, with, with uh, what we're learning. Titus chapter 1 verse 10. He says, For there are many rebellious people full of meaningless talk and deceptive. Especially those of the circumcision group. <coughs> circumcision group was saying that you had to be circumcised or you couldn't be in the kingdom of God. And, um, and he said, it's not the circumcision of the flesh, it's the circumcision of the heart. And they must be silenced because they are disrupting the whole households by teaching things that ought not to be teach. And that, and that for the sake of on dishonest gain. One of the Cretes' own prophets have said it. Cretans are always liars, evil brutes, lazy, and gluttons. Well, that's not a very good <laughs> picture of them. This is what their prophets said. The Cretes are always liars, evil brutes, lazy, and gluttons. And this saying, he says, is true. <laughs> oh, not only did they say, it was true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply so that they will be, uh, will be sound in the faith and will pay no attention to Jewish myths or uh, to the mere, merely human commands of those who reject the truth. So they were caught up in the circumcision thing. Well, you've got to be circumcised. Uh, an interesting thing that one were in, the, in place in the, old, in the, in the scriptures, um, there was a battle coming on, and uh, they said, well, you've got to, take, to have God's blessing on you. They had to take all the people, the men that weren't circumcised, and they circumcised them. And while they were suffering, while they were suffering, they attacked them and, 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 and walled them. <laughs> you know, so, so, you know, like, it's not a physical thing, it's about the heart. 
To the pure, he says, in verse 15 of um, Titus 1, to the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are corrupted and do not believe, nothing is pure. In fact, both their minds and their consciences are corrupted. They claim to know God, but by their actions, they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit to be doing anything good. Very heavy teaching came to the church there. He went on in chapter 3, verse 1. Remind the people to be subject to their rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always to be gentle toward everyone. Well, we're in a time when people aren't all gentle toward everyone. Janet went into a store yesterday, and, and um, I think it was yesterday, yeah, and uh, the lady at the door, uh, she had a mask on, and the lady at the door got mad at her because she didn't have it over her nose. She said, it's stealing out my glasses. <laughs> and she followed her. Three times she, she confronted Janet for not having the mask up over her nose. You go like, like, but that's what's happening. People are scared, and then they're going to rub it in, and... and uh, and pull it up over your nose. So he said, no, we need to be gentle toward, toward everyone. At one time, you too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and, hate, hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God, your Savior, appears, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of the rebirth and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Verse 8, this is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things, so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. The Bible says there's some things that aren't profitable, but these are profitable for everyone. But avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, and arguments and quarrels about the law, because these are unprofitable and useless. Warn a divisive person once and when they and warn them the second time, and after that have nothing to do with them. You may be sure that such people are warped and sinful. They are they are self-condemned. Well, back to James. We go back to where we were reading in James. And uh, in ch chapter uh, 1, verse 26, there is, uh, he's, he's talking about what we need to do. He says, now this one, I printed the wrong color. What is James 1, 26? Someone read it for me, please. 1, 26. I printed it in a color and it didn't print. And it's big print. 1, 26. You got it, Vanessa? Uh, if anyone considers himself religious, All right, so it says, if anyone considers himself religious, but doesn't keep a tight rein on his tongue, uh, that's not good, it's not good. So we're, we're, we're supposed to practice what we preach. We're called to not preach that people and condemn, the other, and condemn what other people do, but deal with ourselves. Over and over we see the word of God calling us to be careful about our tongue, about our talk. It is one of the smallest parts of the body but it's also perhaps the most powerful, the tongue. Your tongue is a very powerful instrument. It can do a lot of damage and it can do a lot of good. It's kind of like the internet. <laughs> it's good and it's bad. The small but powerful tongue, uh, what's it compared to? Well, it's compared to a rudder of a big ship. It can direct the ship. It's compared to a bit and bridle. It's compared to poison. It's, con it's compared to wisdom, uh, to, uh, to weapons. <laughs> And so this scripture in the American Bible, uh, plain English, it says, if a man thinks that he serves God and does not, I'll make this piece of paper here, turn over, and does not hold his tongue, but, de he, but deceives his heart, this person's service is worthless. I listened uh, this morning to a pastor uh, from, from um, I won't say where he's from, but a pastor from a, a city church. And, um, and he was talking over the pending uh, passing of the bylaw for wearing masks. And he said, it isn't a problem with masks. Uh, it isn't a problem with the virus. The problem is, he said, for him, he says, the thing that's heartbreaking is, he said, I've got people writing nasty letters about one side and people writing nasty letters about the other side. And they're all in my church. And they're angry at each other. 
ready to bicker, ready to fight. And uh, he says, I think we need, uh, we need to face what we're facing, but we need to deal with uh, some shifting, shifting thinking and speaking. I thought, wow, this is right on what I'm hearing. We need to deal with what we're speaking. He said, we need to go from victimhood, because if you think you're a victim, it's going to get nasty with people. Victimhood to servanthood. We're called to be servants. Not, not to go out and say, you can't make me a victim, okay? He said, we need to be, be taken from hostility to hospitality. Now, now, we're not allowed to have a lot of people, so it doesn't necessarily mean that, but, but what, what is hospitality? It's letting you know, letting people know that you care about them. You know, it's saying kind words. You can do it on, on the phone. You can drop something off and run real quick. And, and uh, you know, like, like um, I'll never forget the story of the, the, um, the, the young boy that, that had, uh, they didn't have a lot, but their neighbors had a lot less. And so, uh, so it was Christmas. He decided to, we're going to take, it, take a hamper, take some things over to bless his family. And this young boy, um, he, um, he 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 couldn't um, couldn't speak properly, but he still wanted. He cared about these people, and so he got out and snuck over and dropped this off. And he ran as hard as he could to get out of there, and he hit a fence, and it just wrecked his face, and, and he was he was beat up. This fence took him down, and he and he and he um, came into the house, and and um, it was Christmas Eve, and he went to went to. Um, to to bed and, and they passed him up and went to bed and he felt terrible. And he thought, you know, here I am doing good. And look what's happened. Why do good? You know, all these thoughts, and, and we see that with Al Miriam, we see that with, with Dolores in Mexico and things, and just go, Lord, this isn't right. <laughs> this isn't fair. This is not fair. But the next morning, his mother was trying to encourage him when he got up, and, and he uh, got up and um, and she was talking to him, and unbeknown to them, he began to talk. Hitting that fence and returned his ability to talk. You see, we don't see the whole picture. And I want to encourage you, never uh, pull away from hospitality. In the scripture, it talks about being hospitable, entertaining strangers, whereby some have entertained angels. Have you met an angel? You might not know if they're an angel. But when we are kind and caring, and that's not when people are out to get to rip you off, but so he said from hostility to hospitality, from winning to loving. You can win every every argument, but are we giving love? Are we actually letting people know that we care? Communicating that we care? And he said finally from criticizing to honoring. From criticizing to honoring. And so I know everybody can talk about government leaders and we don't, don't always have great things to say, and, and everybody's got an idea and everything. Hey, we need to pray. We need to pray that the Spirit of God sweeps through America, that this whole mess gets straightened out. It's going to have to be God because they're not going to straighten up themselves. There's no way. There's no way they can, from court to court to court to court to court to court to court. Anyways, uh, but God can intervene. I keep praying, God, send a Joseph. Joseph went in and saved Egypt and the children of Israel. Because God showed him how to interpret the dream. And we need a Joseph today that will rise up, won't be the prime minister, won't be the president, won't, won't even be the pastor. It will be the Spirit of God speaking. And we will go forward. So from honoring and from criticism to honoring. And so he said, uh, an interesting thing he said, um, he said, if, if you're in China, and you know people are killed for being Christians, and you know you they, they sneak out of the you know, it's terrible. It's terrible what they go through. Prisons. There's a, 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 a million Muslims that are that are in, in camps because they're Muslims. And, and he said, but if they came to you in China and said, uh, we want to tell you, you're allowed to meet, have church, you can sing, you can lay hands, you can pray and everything. All you have to do is wear a mask. He said they would run to get a mask because they don't have any of that freedom. So we've got to look at the whole picture. And look at the picture. So this pastor went on to say, next Sunday, when you come into our church, because it will be a bylaw, we're, and we live outside the city, so we could, we could twist it. But we're an example. So the next Sunday, he said, we're going to have, you'll be required to wear a mask in their church. We don't have a bylaw like that here, but, but what he talks about is submitting to those in authority. 
And so when we look at this, I go like, wow, he's talking about not using your tongue right, using our mouth right, doing what we speak right. And Paul explains the attitude of gratitude in the body of Christ in James 1 and 27. I have this one printed. <laughs> and, but that would be good reading. Uh, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this. Well, we want to know what it is. To first look after orphans and widows in their distress. So first look after orphans and widows in their distress. There's no glory in helping the helpless. There's no awards to win because we've, you know, we've taken out food and helped people or been there to help them, whatever. And and um, I thought maybe yesterday. I know that I'll probably hear about it, but I was standing on top of the the ten foot ladder, but I, I had one more step to go. I was putting up my my my, my lights there. And uh, the last time I got up on a ladder, the neighbors all were going, what's he doing on a ladder? Uh, walking up and putting up lights. <laughs> I'm very thankful that like, my lights still work, I can do it. I'm a little nervous, but I thought, you know, I'm not really nervous because I grew up with the 20-foot ladders in the orchard in BC. And you know the ladders in the orchard, uh, fruit painting ladders? You've got this big sack here, you're picking the fruit and putting it in there. And the best ones are where you can hardly reach them. And those ladders, they come down like that and they have one leg. And that's how you work them. And then you try and swing it around so you can move. And so they're like, I'm not going to let that fear take over. I got and nobody came to say, well, I'd like to do it for you. But that's okay. I, I don't expect people to do things that I can do. I don't go looking for people. And I got it done. Them up and uh, I didn't get them all bent straight because, anyways, they'll, they'll be good. So, here we see though that we help one another. If you see somebody in need, reach out to them. It says, if you have the ability to meet a need, don't say, Come back tomorrow, we'll bless you. Help them now. And that's what he's saying. That's pure religion. That's what it's supposed to be. He's saying there is a difference in attitude. Attitude of servanthood. So let's just go over quickly to 1 Corinthians 11. And 1 Corinthians 11 is the scripture that leads us up to the Lord's Supper, the communion. And this is what he said. Now I'm giving these, remember I said you don't get any credit for helping people that are in need. And he said, I'm giving these instructions. I do not pra praise you since you have come together not for the better but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there's divisions among you, and in part I believe it. For there must also be fractions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, I said, when you come to take together in one place, it is not for the, to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of the others, and one is hungry and the other is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those that have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. But he first verse 28 says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinks unworthily eat matter, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. The Lord's body is the church. And what the issue was was that the people that had the food were coming in and guzzling it down and not sharing it. That's simple, isn't it? And we've made it all kinds of things, but that's what it was about, the attitude. And therefore, he says in verse 33, Therefore, my brother, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. That's being servants. But if anyone's hungry, let them eat at home, and unless you come together for judgment, and the rest I will set in order when I come. He's saying it's about attitude. So caring about others. And, 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 and it's not just in communion, it's wherever we are. Caring about others. So if people are, are really upset with us, Let's understand that they're fearful. And, and, and they want to see things right. And nobody's out there trying to hurt anybody. We're all trying to do what, what's best. And, uh, and, and it means people putting out rules and stuff, things we have to abide by. And now he says the second part of serving the Lord is this. Walk to uh, uh, the path that we're walking on is, um, well, let me, let me sum it up this way. It's when we put things first in our lives. Uh, the casinos in BC, um, had been opened, and you know what, there, what was happening there? Is loan sharks are out in the parking lot with bags of $20 bills, selling the money, taking, making loans, so people can, can, can go in and, and, and gamble. The interesting, why would they be out there to tell it? Because it's dirty money. They're trying to get rid of this, this dirty money. 
And, and so they passed a thing that you can't come in with a handful of 20s. You know, because they suspect where you got it from. And that's how they're laundering money. And laundering doesn't mean you wash it. <laughs> but they launder all this money is out there. It's unbelievable. Who never, I never think of that. Do you think of that? But, they, but that's what's going on. And so they have to come down with the rule. And so, uh, so the interesting thing is when I go to the casino, uh, not to take the offering and see if we can multiply it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I go with, with our, the, 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 um, the dance society or the library or whatever. You go in and my job is counting. Not counting. My job is opening the little cages, little little pouches, and there's um, 18 pouch, uh, 18 containers where the money goes in and it can't come out. So it comes in there and we unlock it, and I have to unlock it, pull the money out, hold it up to the way, up to the camera, so they can see that I'm not taking anything, and put it back down, and they count it. And you know what? The the, the most of the bills are hundred dollar bills. It's sad. It's sad on a night when I in 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 15 minutes. We, this is just, uh, this. I think it's eight, ten tables. It's sad when in, in one evening uh, we can count $33,000 that people put in there. And so now they got to add to that laundry. So he said, don't walk like that. He said, keep oneself, verse 27, the last part, keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Polluted, that's polluted by the world if you ever want it. Uh, the pure and holy ministry before God in the American Bible says, the pure and holy ministry before the Lord, God the Father is this, to take care of orphans and widows in their afflictions and for the man to keep his soul without defilement from the world. And so what we're seeing here is Jesus is telling us that, that uh, it's important that we do things in our, our words and our actions. Jesus used the tongue uh, to comfort troubled sinners, to bring them to words of peace, forgiveness, and refreshment from, the, from Isaiah and the prophecy. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught that I may know how to sustain with word him who is weary. Jesus took the tongue and said, use it for good. How do we do that? By listening to the word of God, and, and not being quick to, to respond and say th and do things we shouldn't, and to uh, care about others, and to keep our lives from that sinless life, that, that corrupt life. So we'll close with second uh, with Philippians two, 12, uh, two and two, uh, two and verse one. Therefore, if you have any encouragement in being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any uh, common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and in one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility value others above yourselves. Not looking for your own interests, but each of you for, to the interests of others. That's what we've talked about today, caring and serving. Then he says this, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used or to, uh, to uh, for his own advantage, but rather he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature as a servant, being made in a human likeness. I have to say, I really appreciate our team that does worship. And all the different things that people do, but I, I really appreciate our team that's doing worship because they're not up there to perform. They're not up there uh, to get their chance to prove how good they are. It's sad because in some churches they have so many people, they're, they're, they're bickering to get their turn to get up there. Well, that's not serving. I mean, yeah, it's showing you what you can do, but, but when we get serving, we say, well, go ahead, you can do it. I led worship for 40 years. I don't need to lead worship. Uh, I don't take it away from Janet because she can play the piano. <laughs> I can't do that. But, but I don't need to be up there. I don't need to be the one only speaking. Um, you know, it's not, I, I'm here to serve, not, not to be served. But you can say, well, well, I really told him today. No, I, I, I say, Lord, what do you want to say today? And I'm coming back to the word of God. So he said, and being found in Jesus, being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow in heaven and in earth and under the earth. And every time acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
He said, do everything. Uh, therefore, my verse 12 of uh, uh, Philippians 2, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your, your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his, to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling and arguing. <laughs> We're back to the tongue. Right? <laughs> We're back to what we say. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault, in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like the stars in the sky. Wow. You want to shine like the stars in the sky? Serve. Take our tongue and, and, and use it right. Because it controls a lot. And our attitude, and when we see needs, be there to meet, be there to bless, be there to encourage. Uh, it, it just is so much better. It is, it's so much, it's so, so neat to, to see when you can bless people. And when they don't see that you did it, it's even better when you can sneak away. And, and, uh, and, and they'll wonder, who was that masked man? Well, nowadays it might. <laughs> oh, that was funny, eh? <laughs> We got, we got, we're way too serious, you know. We're way too serious. You're walking into the grocery store now, and, and the first part of the week it says, recommended wear a mask. Yeah. Now it says, you have to wear a mask, but they give free ones in there. <laughs> and there's free ones in there. And I got hundreds of them here, so we can use them. If you ever want to wear them, please, please do it. And let's not put anybody down. Now. Like, whatever. Um, I, I wear a suit. Martin never wears a suit. <laughs> can you imagine that? <laughs> Most of my pastor friends never wear suits. I don't know why I've always worn a suit. When I was in Bible school, there was a guy that was in one of the of Al Berg's menswear, and uh, he used to, was in Bible school too. He went to be a missionary, but he uh, he used to have really nice suits all the time because he used them for at work. And then after he wore them for a while, I got to buy used ones. So I always had nice suits. <laughs> Janet thought I would always wear suits, <laughs> but but hey. We, it's not the suit that tells you what, what people are sharing, it's the heart. And I just want to encourage you, once we say it, the heart, the heart, the mouth, actions, don't just, and be quick to listen and slow to speak. And boy, I'm telling you, as things happen, and Martin, you maybe said something prophetically today, uh, we're going to see more things happening and we need to be slow to speak. Because there's so many people out there who want, want to fight and break relationships, even in the church. Because they feel so strong about this, and um, and this one years and years and years ago, I believe this is the last story. This this um, this um, pastor was speaking at a Bible college, and I forget what it was um, on the rapture or was on something or what was something, and and so uh, so he was speaking, and one of the young Bible college students, I used to be one many years ago, uh, came to him and said, "Oh, what do you think about this?" Oh, he says, oh, really? And he gave us a doctrine and thing. He said, what do you think? Oh, he says, he says, that big, oh, yes, it's big. It's big. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody wants to figure this out. He says, they were when I was here 40 years ago, too. <laughs> I want i got to confess, okay? Is it good to confess? I wanted, I prayed and prayed because I knew the Lord was coming. And I prayed, Lord, please, please don't come till I get married. I've been married for 47 and a half years now. <laughs> he hasn't come. But I was really serious. Like, just what I, just my luck, he's going to come just before I get married. And uh, we've been together 47 in, in September, 48 years. So, it, um, you know, we get caught up in these things and, and our emotions get involved and our mouth gets involved and, and we get ready to argue and fight. And let's say, Lord, give us understanding. Let's pray for one another. And if our brother or sister is hurting or whatever, let's not put them down, but let's bless them. Let's love them and encourage them because we all need encouragement. Anybody need encouragement? I hope you're encouraged today. I'm trying to encourage you today. So God bless you as we, uh, as we close in prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Uh, it's truth. It's life. It's hope. It's help. It's our future. And it will give us the direction that we need from day to day. And Lord, we can be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Not only that, Lord, we can, uh, we can care for those that are hurting and uh, we can set a guard over our mouths. And so give us wisdom in doing that. And uh, even when we're about to put people down for what they're doing, Lord, you love every one of them. And so, Father, we bless all the people. 
we just ask you to touch them, bless them, help them, encourage them. Bless us now as we have our fellowship, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.